welcome back. This is another podcast. Today we are actually in Spain and, and lucky enough I have Arlen Moron. How are you doing, brother? Doing amazing. It's been an amazing couple of days, so I'm very excited. Yeah, I appreciate you coming on, spending the time. I just want to have Arlen on because he has gotten and mastered the entire art of personal branding and it's something a lot of you guys are trying to do yourselves, including myself, so I think he'd be a great guest uh, and he has a lot of knowledge and experience in terms of monetizing a personal brand, doing high ticket offers. And uh, I want to jump into that and see where the conversation goes and, and go from there. So give him a little bit of backstory of how you started, how old you were, and just go through that real quick. Sure. Yeah. So my elevator version of my story is uh, my mom's a painter. My dad's a photographer. So I grew up in a very artistic household. I had a camera in my hands from when I was two years old. And um, yeah, my earliest memories of things I did for fun were basically making videos. Uh, around the time I got to college, I, um, I watched The Social Network, a movie about Facebook and Mark Zuckerberg or Meta, um, and that movie just ignited the entrepreneurial flame in me. And I knew from that moment I wanted to build something that every day I would go home and look forward to. And it was really the scene in that movie. If, and if your audience hasn't seen the movie, it's like a must watch for every entrepreneur. It's just like... If you skip that, it's like, you don't. what are you really doing, you know? Mm. So, basically, um, it's a scene in the movie where Zuckerberg is in class, bored out of his mind. And by the way, this is where I was in my life. Like, I was a freshman in college. I was in boring college classes. Um, and at the time, I was majoring in business. <laughs> and, <laughs> and, you know, I'm in, like, you know finance and accounting and obviously these are all important topics but the way they're taught in college is not exactly that useful no. so i'm in these boring classes and i'm watching the movie and it, zuckerberg is in his boring you know computer science class or whatever and his friend comes in and is like hey mark uh, do you know if sarah's single and he's just like bored out of his mind he's like people don't walk around with a sign on their chest that says if they're in a relationship <laughs> And then he just has that epiphany moment to create the relationship status button yeah. or status on Facebook. And he goes ahead and he creates the, the feature. He sprints out of the classroom. It's, you know, uh, negative 10 degrees Fahrenheit or, you know, whatever, whatever that is in Celsius. I don't know. I have uh, no idea, dude. No, it's it probably like 30 degrees uh, uh, Fahrenheit and like negative one degree Celsius. There we go. I get confused with these European. I'm still learning. Things. I have no idea. <laughs> um, but basically, uh, he sprints out in the snow. He's wearing like flip flops, and he's just like darts to his room and builds this feature, and that helps like blow it up. And it was the whole thing for me was not necessarily like, and I'm really even realizing this now. It wasn't for me at least about building a billion dollar company like Zuckerberg's done. It's more about that exhilaration and that moment of of epiphany that you get when you're doing entrepreneurship. And the flow state you get into when you're building, mm. and so it's a fact. Uh, and, and so I saw that scene. And I was like, I want whatever that is. I don't know what it's going to be, but I want that. So naturally, the first thing I try to do is start an app, and that's I feel like a, a big. Uh, it's a big leap. A big leap for, and it's like the first kind of step that most like beginner entrepreneurs try to do is like I'm going to build an app. So I tried to build an app. Um, I got my app valued by my dorm room uh, entrepreneurial genius uh, who valued my app in the dining hall. Uh, basically, my roommate was like, yo, you got to talk to this guy. He's like an entrepreneur. And so I met him in the dining hall and he sat me down and he's like, I told him the idea and he's like, this is worth $250,000. So he valued my company right then and there okay. and I immediately thought I was rich. I was <laughs> like... I haven't done anything. Yeah. I just had an idea and now I'm rich. And so that's how, that's where I was. I continued trying to build an app while also simultaneously starting my first social media marketing company, my first course about how to be an influencer, even though I wasn't an influencer, I had 800 followers on Instagram and I had a <laughs> Shopify, a drop shipping store that I lost money on. Yeah. And I probably had one or two other businesses and I, I put in my LinkedIn uh, that I was an entrepreneur and people like made fun of me for it. I think and, that was a classic. Yeah, dude. And I racked up connections. I had like 500 LinkedIn connections within a week, you know? Oh, just wow. Like, 
For I mean, I just like sat there and like just pressing buttons, you know, it was like add, 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 add. Connect, connect, connect. Yeah, exactly. So, um, my first year in entrepreneurship, I had no idea what I was doing until I got back to my core, which was making videos. And the way it actually happened is funny. About a year into my app, um, a kid on my hockey team, I played hockey in college. Um, he was a developer. He actually ended up getting a job at Google. So he was a really good developer. And he was building the app for me. So he built the first version, sent me like the test thing. And I was like, all right, I got it. Now I need to make the promo video. So I hadn't really made a video all year because I was focused on making money. Yeah. And I make a promo video for my app. And the promo video was fucking amazing. And I mean, like, it wasn't that amazing. But like to <laughs> at me, the time it, it, at the time it was amazing. Yeah. And, um, and more importantly, I found... I. I found what I was looking for, which was that exhilaration of creating something. And from then and there, I basically was like, uh, I had a few other inspirations. I saw, you know, what Casey Neistat was doing. There was a girl at my, at my college. Um, this is 2015, 2016, a girl at my college. I, uh, she was a YouTuber mm. and she was one of the early, like one of the first female, uh, beauty fashion influencers. You remember her name and or not? Gretchen loves beauty. Uh. Yeah. Okay. I probably wouldn't know anyway. Yeah. So anyway, yeah. Um, yeah, I don't think you'd be watching that kind of, but I don't know, maybe it's 2023, but nah, bro. you know, I don't know. Um, <laughs> but anyway, so I saw what she was doing and I like overheard her in the dining hall one day talking about how she was like stressed about paying her tuition and tuition at Boston university is $70,000 a year. It's probably like 85,000 with inflation now. Yeah. But, I was just thinking that Yeah, it's a lot more now. Yeah. But I, I'm like, this girl's like 18 years old and she's paying 70 grand a year from YouTube. And that just like made it click. I'm like, all right, I got to look at this YouTube thing. So I did a little more research. I found a couple other examples. And then I just, I just was like, I'm going to become a YouTuber. Mm. And this was before TikTok. This is before short form content. I'm sure this is being clipped right now. Um, but this is in 2015, 16, there was no, Reels, there was no TikTok, there was no Snapchat spotlight, there was no short form content. Dopamine receptors were a lot more healthy in 2015. Facts. So I'm saying that because I had a little bit of an advantage. In my first year of YouTube, I grew like 100,000 subscribers simply by posting content every single day. Mm -hmm. And I've been doing something somewhat similar to that the last seven years. And uh, it's, it's been a journey, it's been a lot of fun. Um, and now I'm, I'm happy to be here talking to Frank at Capital Club. Bro, we were talking the past couple of days. I had no idea that entire backstory in terms of you being inspired by that movie mm -hmm. uh, and wanting to start an app. I, like you said, I think it's something every new entrepreneur wants to do is like, oh, I'm going to start an app. Yeah. I'm going to sell it for X amount of million dollars. Yeah. Uh, and then they realize like, there's probably not going to happen. Yeah. And there's a lot, of, a lot of other ways for you to actually start making money besides going for the almighty uh, leap to making an app. But that entire process of you creating content every single day for now at this point, like years and years and being focused on your creative side. That's something that I've recently had to start really tapping into. And I really enjoy it because for so long I've been like super locked in, like in a logical way. Uh, and I feel like part of me is kind of, have, I feel like part of me has kind of been, um, not forgotten, but like pushed it aside because I haven't been able to really enjoy my creativity side. And something like this is where I'm actually able to dive into that a bit um, and talk to people like you and learn more stuff. And, you know, we get ideas from each other. Um, but yeah, that was awesome. So here today, Arlen is doing personal brain still after all these years. Um, do you want to go into how, like, what you're offering, what you're selling, um, and basically all that kind of stuff? Yeah, sure. Yeah. Um I think I'll present it in the form of a story. Yeah. I think it's the most effective way. So I have three main products that I sell. Um, the first one stems from uh, just, and it's funny, we just had Gary Brecca talk about um, mental health and depression and anxiety and the cures and uh, remedies for that with, um, you know, like amino acids and essentially fixing, fixing your DNA, mm -hmm. which I never really heard of. But Growing up, um, my dad had bipolar depression, and I think it, whether it was a result of that genetically, who knows, whether it was result, the result of nutrient deficiency or um, 
or, or just like an uh, environment in a stressful ho- household, um, what I prescribe it to have been was just complete unawareness and, uh, and a lack of understanding about how to c- control my own brain. But I had a three or four year period of my life where I was extremely depressed. Mm. And um, it, the, the depression was like a anxiety mixed with um, almost like a hypochondria. I would think there was something wrong with me all the time as well as the worst part was just the repetitive negative thinking patterns. Yeah. So like every thought in my brain was just like negative thought after negative thought. And then the panic attacks and the anxiety attacks that would happen like in public. And it was really embarrassing. And like, would you actually have like an outburst kind of, or were, were you good at hiding it? I was good at hiding it, uh-huh. but you know, it was, um, you know, there, there were like a couple times it became an issue and I had to like leave social situations and stuff. Yeah. But, uh, it was actually something that I didn't want to tell anyone about. You know, I didn't even want to tell my parents because I, I would think it would upset them. Mm-hmm. And I also thought that if I told them they would bring me to a doctor and they would med me up with something. And I just intuitively knew that was not the right thing to do. Mm-hmm. So four years of dealing with that mentally, I got very obsessed with, um, you know, mental reprogramming and essentially uh, neuro linguistic programming, NLP mixed with like gratitude journaling and just the whole entire spectrum of personal development from the time I turned 18 to now I'm 26. And throughout that period of time, I mean, it took, once I discovered this world and some techniques, I was able to immediately cure my essentially mental illness in like two weeks. Yeah. And after that, I was like, okay, if I can can change my entire mental reality in two weeks, what can I do to my physical reality? You know, Mm. my, my, uh, wealth, my relationships, and I started applying just basic, you know, visualization and, and all these different NLP type practices and experimenting. Yeah. And I tried everything. Like I read every personal development book on this stuff. I consulted experts. I bought coaching and mentorship. And it just gave me a wealth of knowledge. Around the time I was 22, I had an idea just before the start of the pandemic uh, for an app. And not, again. <laughs> um, Full circle. Full circle, but this time it was a lot more grounded in like the actual concept. And I saw it in my mind and I was like, I need to know how to build this app um, because it, I know it can help so many people basically rise from where I was when I was 15, 16, 17. In, and didn't, the age doesn't matter, but the mental state, mm-hmm. the state of uncertainty, the state of, uh, of, of depression and anxiety, and a state where you're essentially you just don't have what you want in life. Yeah. And I can take people in that state, give them clarity about what they want to pursue in life, and then a, a, a hyper effective set of action steps to actually get that thing. And so the concept basically uh, for this app baked in all of the most effective um, mental reprogramming tools with the most effective uh, productivity tools. So I had this idea called Maxi. Uh, we could get into the name maybe another time privately. It has like a personal meaning that yeah. I don't like to share because um, it's, it's close. It means something. Yeah, yeah exactly. Yeah. yeah, but it um, but but it's called Maxi, and it's a uh, it, it's a product I actually built myself. Mm. So pandemic hits, twenty twenty, we're locked in our house. I get the idea. Like actually, I think I got the idea two weeks before the pandemic started, and. I, um, I, I asked my developer friends, what do I do? Like, I, I have an app. I've tried to do it before, but I don't think I should pay someone. I don't know. And cause, uh, you know, at the time I just, I perceived like an app build to be like a $200,000 project that I just wasn't ready to take on. My friends were like, bro, you can just you, do uh, no code. You can do it yourself. I was like, what? Mm. So I Googled basically how to build an app without coding. And I figured it out. Bro was doing no code before it was a trend. Yeah, exactly. That's this was dope. in, this was the start of the pandemic. Yeah. And, uh, and I did it. I ba- basically what I did is, and I knew a lot about like building really good products because I read so much business and personal development books. Mm. And the key to building a good product is listening to your audience. So I built V1. I launched a test group, 30 people, let them in. I, I had them experiment and use it. And I had a whole community platform where, they just gave me their feedback, bug fixes, everything. I went in as I'm the CEO, I'm the marketer and the developer, and I made the changes. 
And then I launched another uh, cohort, another 30 people in, they test it, make iterations, launch another, and I did that for like six months. Mm. And so I just made this product so good that no one ever complained. And I've been working on the, uh, I've been, uh, I've been promoting it for like three years. Um, and that's maxi. It's 47 bucks a month. It, uh, and it'll seriously change someone's life. Like it's changed. It's helped people lose weight. It's helped people get out of depression. Mm -hmm. It's helped people, uh, increase their numbers. Like, uh, there's a guy named Emmanuel who does sales for Iman Gaggi and he uses it and he had a, a record month. I think he did $300,000 in sales wow. for, for Iman, uh, Emmanuel. He's a great for guy. Grow your agency. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. And, and so like, it, it's just like insane productivity tool. It's really simple. And actually, speaking of Capital Club, I met Hunter Isaacson here, who's an app building genius. He's built apps that have hundreds of millions of downloads. Mm. And so now I'm working with him on taking Maxi and putting it onto the app store. Yeah, I remember you saying that. Yeah. yeah, and turning it even more simple than it already is into app form. That's coming. That'll probably be three to six months out. Mm. But uh, that's, that's the first one. The next one, my YouTube channel has always been about essentially traveling and making friends and uh, I've had a, I've, I've built a really cool network and people in the comments and in Instagram DMS would always ask me, you know, how do you make friends? How do you, how do you network more effectively? And the answer I, I always realized was that I was making videos and I was putting them online and also pictures, Instagram. Right. Mm -hmm. And I, again, had studied so much psychology, personal development. And I was also hyper obsessed with, uh, social, uh, social skill development throughout college. You saw, uh, Victor today, his speech, he said he was a professor or not a professor. Dating, that's, right? uh, sorry. Dating coach for RSD. Yeah. He was a dating coach for RSD. You know, yeah. RSD. Right? Yeah. Yeah. So I was obsessed with RSD. I okay. bought every course I bought like high ticket mentorships with the, you know, the top coaches. Um, actually Owen cook is like a good friend of mine now. Okay. Um, and I know a couple of the uh, other, a couple other of the RSD guys, and you know they changed my life. And so, um, I just been not only had I been hyper obsessed with learning the skill of of improving my social skills in college, like bro, I don't know about you, but I would watch these videos, and one thing they said to do was to do uh, reference experiences. So basically, I would go out, I would talk to people, you know it's college, right? So you're trying to meet guys, girls, whatever. Like, obviously I wanted to meet and date girls and such, yeah. but I would go out, I would meet people. And then every night I would write down my interactions. I have hundreds of pages of my notes. Do you have this too? Okay. So I want to let you keep going, but I had to stop you because your entire story so far in terms of you even like, um, going through a depressive phase and then yeah. doing the entire self-improvement. And now even this, yeah, I have two journals throughout yeah. 2020 and 2021 with this same exact stuff. I would go out just, uh, to like shopping markets and shopping malls, yeah. literally just journal and log everything. Yeah. How I was doing, because I went through yeah, exactly. a weird phase like this and it's very interesting, but keep going. Yeah. So I was just self-correcting and I have, I have my whole freshman year just documented notes. Right. And then what happened after my freshman year, I started the YouTube channel. So now I'm into this self-improvement, real social dy dynamic stuff, but I'm filming everything now. Mm. And that took it to a weird psycho level, bro, because I was filming these parties, like parties I'm talking to girls, you know, I'm meeting people, whatever. And then I would go home every night. So a party's like, you know, midnight to 3 a.m. And yeah. I'm editing, re-watching the footage from the whole day of interactions, like my infield footage <laughs> is what they would call it. And then and I would edit, it took, takes like five to eight hours to edit these videos. Yeah. So I re-watch myself, I see how people are reacting to me. And like, obviously I'm editing it for a vlog, but I'm also just watching myself. And that's actually a really great social tip for anyone to like, not even film your interactions, but film yourself talking to a camera. Yeah. Notice what you look like. Like notice how much you're smiling. Notice how much you're, you're raising your eyebrows or tilting your head, or if you have any strange tics, right? Yeah. This is, it's, it was completely life-changing for my, my social dynamics and social ability. And so as a result of that, right, I got really good at meeting people. I built an amazing network and people would always ask me in my direct messages and Instagram, like, how do I make friends like yours? And so 
I made a product around it and I launched it about three years ago. I relaunched it a couple times with like different branding, but now it's called tribe accelerator tribe accelerator is my course where I, I literally bake, I baked everything that I learned in you know, nuanced stuff that, uh, obviously I bought a lot of courses and, and learned a lot from other mentors, but no one did what I did, bro. Like no one sat there and edited a thousand videos from their entire college experience, watching all their interactions and traveling the world and stuff too. So I have some pretty nuanced stuff in there when it comes to actually actual social dynamics. Mm -hmm. And I mix it in, of course, with the personal branding side because I've spent so much time analyzing, okay, if I post a picture with this person or if I post a picture looking this way, I think that was the first thing you and I talked about is I looked at your Instagram and I was like, oh, bro, like you're, you're standing like this in this photo, you're looking over here. Um, if you were smiling in this one and yeah, you know, so I, I thought a lot about that as well. And I, I broke it that down to like an autist level. Yeah, exactly. What do you call it? The autist level? Yeah, exactly. It's, this is my autism. Yes, <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Um, we all have it for something. Yeah. So I've been pretty, uh, I don't even know if autist, autist is the right word. I would probably call it more just like, what's the basement like the, the like schizo it's like basement schizo uh incel this is more like incel okay. incel social behavior yeah so that's that's what i i i did um and yeah it's so it's it's a course but there's also a great community and the main thing is honestly the events uh -huh. um or i should say meetups my coaches for the program uh, who are experts in the the content that i teach they set up events everywhere around the world every single week so most oh, wow. guys who join, right, they're guys who are in their hometown, their friends are partying, their friends are drinking, um, or they're, they're already on a good path, their friends are cool, but they just want to expand their network. You join Tribe, you immediately get on an onboarding call with one of my team members, and he's like, where do you want to go? Where do you want to set up a trip to? And we just set up the trip for you, show you which Airbnb we recommend, get a bunch of guys from the community to go with you, split the costs. And now you've got a worldwide network of entrepreneurs and people building cool shit that you can travel literally anywhere in the world with. That's so, dope. yeah, so that's what we built. And not only that, but when you go, you actually have people that know how to take cool photos of you. Yeah. That's a serious problem that uh, a lot of guys have. Yeah. They're like, well, I want to get cool pictures, but my friends don't even think Instagram is important. And when I ask them to take pictures of me, they think it's weird and yeah. their pictures suck. So you got people who understand how to do it committing to travel and just it's a completely mind opening experience that I've created. The last thing I do is uh, much more private and much more selective. Um, and it's, that's because it's, I work one on one with a very few select clients where I literally build an entire brand strategy for them, a social media strategy. And I, um, I plug them with team members. Mm -hmm. So I, I'll hire, I'll find and hire and train a videographer, short form editors, and I train them on the brand aesthetic to make them that unique entrepreneur stand out. Yeah. That's it. Yeah. Branding's everything. Yeah. Just going back to that, bro. That was so funny. Your entire upbringing in terms of you going through that phase, what was it, you said? Three years Yeah. of like yeah, yeah, going yeah. through a weird time. Mm -hmm. So just to relay back to that, I went through a period as well where like, I was down bad and yeah. I vividly remember being in my kitchen, uh, holding, well, I got in contact with uh, a therapist, um, and I was holding, uh, a, you know, a container of SSRIs and I was so close to start taking them, yeah. but I just knew deep down, I was like, if I start taking this, like, first of all, I know that they're cap zombie. Yeah. Yeah. And then, you know, two, I'm going to be a zombie. I'm going to be like just empty even more just like emotionless. Um, and I knew three that I could somehow, some way figure out how to get out of it because I was financially successful, but I was lacking physical health, obviously mental health in this case, uh, and just purpose because I was just living life super comfortable, wake up uh, at, you know, at noon or 1 p.m. every day, eating unhealthy and I didn't have a network of guys, you know, like I was still back at home, back in New Jersey and a lot of people really didn't have similar situations that I was in. Uh, and I really didn't have that many people to connect with. And that's why, you know, I kind of spiraled down uh, and went looking online to find like-minded people uh, eventually. And then I found, do you know who Hamza is? Yeah. Yeah. So I, I found his content 
And then I found some other people's content and then I went down the schizo route of documenting everything as well. And just, I, I read my original journal a couple weeks before we came out here and it was just so weird to just like go back in time and just see where I was like mm. on like November 19th of like 2020, just like that exact day. And then, you know, I had five things uh, written down that I was grateful for. Mm -hmm. I would do that every single day. Um, now I haven't journaled in the past like two months. I probably still should, but it's like, um, like a photo, you know, it's like a, a it's like a, a moment captured forever. And it's the same thing for journaling. Mm. You're just journaling your thoughts opposed to an image. Mm. But, um, yeah. So first you had an app or you were trying to make an app and then, you know, it came full circle for creating maxi and stuff like that, which is awesome. How did you find Luke and all of this? Yeah. So let's go back to last like, uh, October, November mm -hmm. and for anyone that's watched my content already, you guys might be familiar with how I, you know, here today. But back then, last year, it was June, uh, and I came across the Fresh and Fit podcast, um, and I was immediately kind of drawn to them because, mm -hmm. you know, especially with Myron, you know, he's pretty funny with mm -hmm. in terms of being, you know, pretty extreme. Mm -hmm. uh, but he's also sp spitting facts for the most part. Um, so I started following their content. And then I, you know, started commenting on their stuff pretty often, just trying to make my personal brand and my brand, um, kind of tied to theirs. Yeah. And I would always comment stuff, always liked their, their content. And eventually I was at, I was at the gym one day and one of their old team members DM me on Instagram. He's like, yo dude, I see you're always commenting, showing love, uh, for fresh and fit guys and, uh, fresh Prince CEO or Walter, however you want to call him, whatever, yeah. whatever you want to call him. Um, and then we kept going back and forth. He was like, you know, we're having a one mil party in a couple months. Um, he started sending me all this information and eventually, you know, he launched his own discord the guy within fresh and fit, like the guy launched his own discord for like networking and stuff. Um, and I provided him value by helping him launch his discord and bringing new members into, uh, and just nurturing that relationship over a couple months. And then like, a couple months go by and then randomly he texts me again. Cause you know, we we're going back and forth and stuff. And he's like, yo bro, I think I have a really cool opportunity for you. Um, and I didn't know what to expect cause I was just helping him out with his discord and I really wasn't expecting anything too crazy. And he texts me, he's like, yo, in a couple weeks, Dan Bilzerian is going to be in town for a fresh and fit episode. Uh, and I was wondering if you want to come to the studio and I was like, obviously, yes, I want to go and of course, meet the guys and of course, meet Dan Belzerian because like every why young did guy. They, why did they invite you? Well, he, he messaged me because I was able to help him and grow his own paid discord. Uh, so he was kind of, okay, gotcha. he, he felt like, I guess, reciprocating that. Yeah. Okay. And he invited me to come to the studio. Uh, and long story short, Dan Belzerian wound up not coming to the studio, but he flaked. But I still got to go ahead and meet the, the guys there and, and then meet some other guys in the crypto space that were there. Uh, shout out to Charlie and Miguel. You guys are dope. Um, but yeah, that same night I was there in the studio for two live shows, went to the club after with the guys. Um, and then we hung out for a little bit after just talking about a whole bunch of stuff. But eventually I nurtured that relationship for more and more months. I got closer with fresh, uh, because you know, he's big on personal branding as well. Uh, and that's something that I've put a lot of time and energy into. And then fast forward several months later, I, that's right. So I come in contact with Sneeko's manager mm. and he was like, we're having a, a mini podcast tour. He was going to LA, Vegas and Miami. And before I was supposed to go and record with Sneeko in Los Angeles, that was the original slot I was supposed to get. Um, but that fell through. And for a second, I didn't know it was like a week where I wasn't sure if I was going to go ahead and film with Sneeko. Um, but we, we wound up figuring it out and we filmed in Miami. So as time continues to go on, I'm building and nurturing the, the relationships with these guys, uh, more with fresh, uh, and basically fresh, put in a word to Luke to get me to capital club. Uh, so you never know what any sort of, uh, providing value to people can lead to. Yeah. I was literally just helping one of their employees with their own discord. Mm. And then it snowballed into me now being here. So it's just really, really weird how little things like that can just take off. Yeah, seriously. And yeah. it's blown me away, dude. I, I definitely have a different backstory. I was just in 
Lake Como with uh, Colin, who's mm-hmm. like a Capital Club OG. Yeah. And Colin Yerkeson. And um, we've been buddies for like a year, year and a half or so. And I'd obviously seen Luke's content. It's kind of unavoidable in the space. And I, I could tell Luke was very... Um, very smart, you know, and very strategic with everything he's doing. Mm -hmm. Um, I think the reason I hadn't like fallen further into his funnel previously and, um, and like in the capital club rabbit hole was simply because I'm I'm already in, I'm already in so many groups Mm. and I was just trying to focus, but I'm so glad that Colin convinced me like, and Colin's someone I trust a lot. He's like, bro, trust me, you need to come to this event. And I, I came and it was, uh, it's exceeded my expectations. This is a good question. How do you how do you nurture client? How how do you nurture followers and turn them uh, into clients or mm. customers long term? Um, okay, so I guess uh, I I think just going back to just the the mindset that I had when I first started my brand is the mindset I still have today, and I knew pretty early and I'm not sure how I knew this but learning how to storytell is this is the most important tool as a creator um, as a person who has a brand and the reason is because storytelling takes people on an arc when I first started my channel again I was making videos every single day and so every day I was telling a story mm. and I would practice the the three arc, the three part uh, three act narrative um, which is basically act one you introduce the characters you introduce the setting you introduce the circumstances that transitions into act two which act two is about the first conflict that arises between the characters and the rising action that that conflict and maybe other conflicts come in and, and uh, mix around with that central conflict and so you have a setting and the characters you have a conflict enter and when a conflict enters people relate to it yeah right no matter how intense the conflict or how little every human being experiences life through conflict so when you see someone going through something even if you haven't been through that exact conflict you you feel the emotions that they're feeling Uh, actually gary brecker today in his talk was talking about how the memory is activated through emotion Yep. Through the, um, exactly. Through consciousness. Exactly. So uh, with storytelling, you immediately activate emotion. And I learned that really quickly that like the way, the ways in which you can ignite emotion in people through storytelling uh, to finish that three part narrative, you have the setting essentially act one, you have the rising conflict, which is act two, the climax, and then you have the, uh, the, the resolution. So I practiced that every single day and it's, it's an art form, you know, mm-hmm. like it, it takes a long time to get really good at, at storytelling. And when you learn and master storytelling, you provide value without, uh, without asking for anything, you know, and, and every story I tell, I'm taking the listener through a journey. So when you take them through that journey and you, you, explain the transformation that either you went through or that whoever you're telling the story about went through the viewer takes something away from that they take value and there's no ask in a story there's no um there's no uh call to action to buy anything they just relate Mm -hmm. and so you you earn the audience's emotion and then they store you the storyteller in their memory so by telling stories consistently every day you basically build up a a, a collective consciousness memory bank of yourself. Okay. Yeah. I like that. And it's, yeah, it's a little weird, but like every time I tell a story, I'm basically, and people listen to it, I'm implanting myself into their memory. And it's, it, it's not like I'm like infiltrating. Like it's like they enjoy the stories, you know? Mm-hmm. Um, you know, you look at some of the most, the biggest people on social media uh, or at Capital Club, so we can mention Luke. You know, Luke is an amazing storyteller. He's a very interesting character, and he's built his own story in a very interesting way as well. Yeah. And so the more stories you tell, the more people see that, and the more they remember you. So I told stories every day for, I think, eight months before I ever asked for anything in return. 
So the way that you turn clients into customers long term, or, or sorry, viewers into customers, is you tell stories. And the stories in themselves are an insane amount of value. Um, and then eventually, whenever you ask for anything, it's the old jab, 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 right hook. Bro, I was just thinking that from Gary it, V. It's, it's jab, 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 right hook. For those who don't know, great book, Gary V. Highly recommend. Yeah. But basically what it means is you deliver, deliver, deliver. And the way that I, I uh, choose to do it is by telling story, telling to- story, telling story, improving your storytelling ability. I also, so after my first year of business school, I transferred to the film school. Okay. So I actually started studying storytelling as well. And um, tell stories every day, which is value in of itself in a very human way. Um, like stories are designed for the human brain. Mm-hmm. And then when you ask for something, it's, it's a no brainer. Like I launched my first uh, business and I didn't know anything about ad copy or funnels or, you know, anything. Right. And, uh, I think I had, when I launched it, I had like 7,000 followers and I made like five grand in a week. And that was, that, that took me like seven months to do. I didn't sell anything for seven months, but, um, but you know, when you, when you pull the trigger, finally, uh, you, you've just built this goodwill. Now, the other thing you have to do is understand how to solve problems. Yeah. You know, I, I kind of joke that, and I've said this to a couple guys here, like, cause so many guys here are so good at funnels. I joke that like, I could literally just make a website with a picture of a piece of poop on it and a buy button and people would buy it. And that's because it's just reciprocity, right? Like for example, Gary Brecca today in his seminar, um, he went for like an hour and a half, just dropped so much value. How many stories did he tell? A bunch, bro. He told a lot of stories. I was so wrapped in. He put his QR code on the screen. He didn't even say buy my product. I scanned the QR code. I'm like, oh, what's this? Pulls up bundle package, $1,200, instant buy. I just Apple paid it immediately. I was like, I don't even know what this is, <laughs> but I'm going to buy it. And that's the power of a personal brand. Uh-huh. When you tell stories consistently, to your audience, they'll buy anything because you've already given them the value. Like every time you tell a story or create a piece of content, you are literally printing money. And and it's again, it's not like a it's not like a nefarious it's not we're not the Federal Reserve here, you know? Like mm-hmm. it, this isn't a nefarious thing at all. You're providing so much value by telling these stories. And um and you just have to understand that the, you know, you're building a lot of, of, um, trust and delivering a lot of value. Um, and so again, when you sell something, you don't need to do much. And so that's why I think the core of, of turning followers into customers is just being a good storyteller. Storytelling for me personally has been one of my weakest points because I've been logical for most of my life. Yeah. And I feel like tapping into that, you got to be more creative and, you know, tap into more people, like people's emotions and stuff. Um, and, you know, you mentioned that whole thing you're saying right here, people buy on emotion too. Mm-hmm. And the more you can kind of tap into people's emotion, the more they're going to like you uh, and more they're going to want to, like you said, reciprocate and buy something from you. Um, storytelling is... I need to get better at it. It's one of the things that I've kind of, for whatever reason, continuously put off. But every day or every other day, I try to practice it. Mm. You know, because you said you were doing it for what? Every day? For how long? Yeah, for years. For years. Yeah. So if you guys are trying to build a personal brand or even just like sell stuff, I think that it's a very good practice. Just storytelling and just getting better, talking on camera. Um, because it's not really natural for me at least. Yeah. But, um, I mean, I didn't really have anything else planned. I wanted to just sit down with Arlen and and get, you know, a quick little sit down with him just to give you guys some of his back background. And, um, yeah, guys, I hope you enjoyed this little sit down and I appreciate you coming on. Of course. W man's, but guys, I will see you in the next video.